to sleep and then and then we'll be on our way. Last time I saw you, we were talking about systems of equations and we're continuing on systems of equations. So far we've gone over systems of equations by graphing, which isn't the best way to solve them unless you're doing it, say, on a computer and you could really find um, like accurate solutions. But what it did give you is that conceptual, that visual concept of where it's where the graphs, two graphs intersect, right? And they have common solutions. And then we started working on them algebraically and we did substitution, right? Where we would solve for one of the variables and then we would plug it into the other equation for that variable and figure out what the other one is. And that is simple when the problems themselves are simple, when it's easy to get either like a Y equals to plug in or an X equals to plug in. But as we move on, those become more and more complex. And so what we're working on today is we are using systems of equations, but we are using the elimination, elimination process. Um, the steps for solving using elimination, oh my gosh, I wish I'd like taken a picture of these and put them up. You know what? I'm going to go snag a picture of it just so that I don't have to rewrite all of this stuff out since we're like, I can't find my mouse because I think it's so much easier for me to just, you know snip a picture of it and put that up for you instead of writing all this stuff out and it's more legible for you almost there the next time i see you once we do this we're going to continue on elimination and we're going to do just word problems because these really um they align themselves well to word problems so i don't see any reason why not to do it that way and then we will move into hopefully just copying that will work Then I could just. Uh, it's going to make me save it. Um, and then we'll move into like three, like if we have three variable equations, and then we'll do like systems of inequalities, and then we'll have a test. Right? Pretty exciting stuff. Oh, well, that didn't give me anything. That was a waste of my time. Basically, I'm going to write out all of the uh, steps. Now that I wasted all that time, it's going to be a really exciting video for people to watch now. First thing we're going to do is we are going to line up the equations. What does that mean? It means make sure my x variables are lined up with the other x variables and the y variables are lined up with the other y variables and then whatever it equals are lined up with the equals. Right? We're just going to line up the equations. Then we are going to multiply one or both equations so that we can both equations um, by some number 
that allows us to eliminate one of the variables. And I will show you more about that in a bit. That allows us to eliminate. I will uh, post a copy of the rules into your Google Classroom so that you don't have to write this mess down. One of the variables. And then we are going to add or subtract the equations to, elim to, to eliminate. Add or subtract. This is so ugly. And we are going to solve for remaining variable. Don't bother writing this down if you are someone who actually takes notes in this class. I will post a copy of these steps into your uh, Google Classroom so that you don't have to do that. And then you're going to substitute that answer into the other equation. Um, let's just do a bunch of examples um and show you the steps since i'm going to actually post the uh uh instructions as we go so in my first problem my first example that i have for you guys everything's already lined up we're actually eliminating the first couple of steps anyways so my first problem is going to be x plus 7y equals 17 Yes, Eugene. You're just telling me that now? I mean, nobody else noticed that I wasn't sharing the screen? <laughs> like a minute ago. <laughs> All right. Well, the good news is, is all you guys missed was me poorly writing out the instructions that I'm going to be posting in Google Classroom anyways. So um, we're just going to start with examples, and I'll explain it as we go with the examples, which is going to – it's all right. It's not your fault. It's my fault. I'm the one who wasn't uh, sharing my screen. So we've got our first example. We've got x plus 7y equals 17. And then our second equation is going to be x minus y equals negative 7, right? And this is a system of equations. And what we're looking for is where they have a common solution. And the first rule, the first step was to line up the equations, but these are already lined up. And what I mean by line up the equations is my x's are over my x's and my y's are over my y's and my um, constants or whatever they're equal to, they, those are lined up, right? And then the next step would be if I need to, if I don't have any that are the same. So here I have an x over an x. I don't really need to manipulate this this problem to eliminate one of the variables because if I just subtract this bottom one from the top one, my x's are going to disappear. Does that kind of make sense? What I'm talking about by eliminating is I'm trying to get rid of one of the variables so that I can solve for the other variable, so that I only have either an x or a y in the equation, right? And so I don't have to manipulate this equation to do that. All I have to do is subtract one from the other. The main thing to remember when we're subtracting an entire equation from another equation is that this minus right here that I put in applies to every piece inside that parentheses, right? I have to apply it to all of the parts. 
So here, if you look, I have x minus x. Well, that's just 0. And that was what we wanted, right? We wanted that x to drop out. But this is 7y minus a minus y, right? That's the same as saying 7y plus y, which is going to give me 8y equals, and here I have 17 minus minus 7, right? which is the same as saying 17 plus 7, which is going to give me 24. And so what it leaves me with is now I have 8y plus 24. My x's have been eliminated, which is why we call it the elimination method. And so all I have to do is solve now for y. I figure out what my y is, and that's easy enough, right, because it's just 8 times y, so I'm just going to divide out that 8 from both sides, and I get y equals 3. And then once I know what that y is, I can plug it into either of the original equations, right? So I'm going to do it into the top one, partly because it's on top and partly because I haven't done anything to manipulate it, so I know it's the original equation. So here I have x plus 7y, but we know that y just equals 3, so we're plugging in that 3, equals 17, and now I can easily figure out what x equals. So this is x plus 21 equals 17, and all I have to do is subtract 21 from both sides, and I get x equals negative 4. And so I have both of my solutions, right? I have y equals 3, I have x equals negative 4. You can always know if you're correct because it would be true in both solutions if I plugged it into the original, this equation, this x minus y equals negative 7. It should be true for this one as well. I'm not going to ask that you go through and check them, but if you wanted to, if you were taking a test and you wanted to know if they were accurate, they would be true when I plugged in those x and y values into each equation. So if I plugged in x is negative 4 minus y, which is 3, I do get negative 7. That's a true statement. You can see that it's accurate and that these are solutions. When you are doing them in the worksheet, like this x, y, as I have it right here, perfectly acceptable. Delta math might ask that you write them as a point. I'm not sure. I haven't assigned you anything for delta math for this one, but I might for the next one. So I just want to show you that it could also be written as a point, which would be negative 4, 3, right? Your x value is always first in a point. Um, so. Let's do another example. This one, we didn't have to do step one or step two, right? One of those problems just automatically dropped out, right? One of our variables, we had an x over an x. It was really easy to eliminate one of the variables. But that's not always going to be the case. So we want to look at some problems where it's not the case. Um, in this example, if I have 4x plus, oops, I don't want that to be plus, I want it to be minus, minus 9y equals negative 42, and I have x plus 5y equals 4. Now, the first step, like I said before, was to line up the equations, but we're lined up. Our x values are over our x values, right? Right here we have nothing but x. Right here we have our y's on top of our y's. And here we have our equals, our constants on top of our constants. So we don't have to manipulate this system to get them to line up. They're already lined up. But what we do have to look at is what would be the easiest method to eliminate one of these. Like 4x plus or minus x doesn't work, right? That's not going to eliminate one. They're not opposites. They're not the same. Here, I have minus 9y and 5y. Like if I added or subtracted this, I'd wind up with like a minus 4y. So it doesn't work. So I'm going to have to multiply 
something times one of these to get one of them to drop out. And there's always going to be an easier one, or you hope there is. Sometimes it's just a pain and you have to multiply, you have to, to work on both of them to get something to eliminate. But this one would be pretty easy because if I just multiplied this times 4, right, or negative 4, it would make it opposite. Minus four, minus three equals negative seven. They're not multiplied, they're subtracted. So negative four minus another negative three does equal negative seven. I understand where you're coming from because you were thinking multiplication, it would make them positive, but we're actually subtracting negative three from negative four. So it's going like, right? If I started at negative four, I'd be going three in the negative direction and land on negative seven. Does that make sense? Okay. So when we look at this problem right here, if I multiply this whole thing times four, these four X's will be the same, right? And I could just subtract one from the other. Um, or I can multiply the whole thing times negative four, which is what I like to do because then I don't have to worry about changing signs. I could just add them together and one would drop out. And what I would get is, I always rewrite the first problem. I go, okay, 4x minus 9y equals negative 42. And then this one would be minus 4x minus 20y. Make my x look more x-y equals negative four times four is negative 16. And the reason I like to do that, I can't draw a straight line to save my life today. This was negative 16. Is now I can just add these two together. I don't have to worry about distributing that negative through. I can just go, okay, I'm gonna add these together. Well, I get four X minus four X is just zero. And it eliminates that X variable, which is what we were hoping to do all along, right? And then I have minus nine Y minus 20. Well, that's minus 29 Y. And this is gonna be minus 58, right? When I add those together. And so, it makes it a lot simpler if I just make it an opposite, which is why I like to multiply it times a negative so that I know it just it just eliminates them a little easier because it makes opposites when I add them together, they disappear. Conveniently, I know that, that 58 divided by 29 is two, 29 times two is 58. So that I know is gonna work out for us pretty well. And I'm gonna divide both sides by this negative 29. And I am going to get, or 29, that's why I said it and I didn't write it right. And I get y equals, well, negative 58 over negative 29 is positive 2. And we know now what our y equals. And we can just plug it in and figure out what our x is. So I have 4x minus 9y, but we know that y is just 2, equals negative 42. Could I have done it into x plus 5y equals 4? Absolutely. It would have probably been easier, but this one hadn't been manipulated, so I just kind of went for, for it. So that would be minus 18 equals negative 42, and we're just going to add 18, and we're just going to solve this out for x. I get 4x equals 42 minus plus 20 would be 22. So I think that's going to be 24, negative 24. And I'm going to get X equals negative three, right? I divided by four in my head. I probably shouldn't have done that in my head. And so now I know that I have Y equals two and I have X equals negative three. And if I wanted to, I could check those. I could go and plug that in to the other equation, right, where I go x equals negative 3 plus 5 times 2 is 10, negative, yeah. Makes sense? All right.
24 divided by 4. <laughs> that is negative 6. See, it's a good thing that I mentally went through and checked that because I saw that, wait, that doesn't work out. It would be negative 6 for x. Right, because 24 divided by 4 is 6. I don't even know why I was thinking 3. So we did one where we didn't have to manipulate it at all, right? Our original problem, we didn't have to do any manipulation at all. We could just subtract one from the other because our x is lined up. And we did one where we had to um, alter one of the problems, right? Sometimes we will have to alter both of the problems to make it work, to get rid of one. Um, if I look at um, this example, we've got 5x plus 3y equals negative 7. And here I have got 2x plus 7y equals 3. I don't have anything that's just x or just y, and I don't have anything that I could easily, like, if I look at the x's, I can't multiply 2 times anything to get 5. If I look at the y's, I can't multiply 3 times anything to get 7. So I'm going to have to pick whichever variable I want to eliminate for, and I'm going to have to change both equations, right? If I, if I multiply this equation times 2, this would be 10x. And if I multiply this equation by, I'm going to say negative 5, this would be minus 10x right? So if I do that, I can eliminate my x variables. Sometimes I have to multiply both equations and put them in a form that works. I could have done it with the y's as well. I, instead of going 2 and negative 5, I could have multiplied the top one times 7 and the bottom one times negative 3, and we could have eliminated the y's, but it doesn't really matter you're going to wind up with the same solutions anyways. But I have to bring it through to each piece. So I'm going to rewrite these equations. This one's going to be 10x plus 6y equals negative 14. And then we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Here I'm going to have minus 5 times 2x, and I'm going to get minus 10x. And then negative 5 times 7y is going to be minus 35y. And then negative 5 times 3 is going to give me equals negative 15. And what that allows me to do now is when I add these two together, these x's are just going to drop out, right? 10x minus 10x is 0. And then I can just move on to my y's. Positive 6 minus 35 is going to give me negative 29y. I've been dealing with the 29s a bit today. And conveniently, negative 14 minus 15 is also negative 29. And so when I divide out this negative 29 from both sides, I wind up with y equals 1, right? Anything over itself is just 1. And so I can take this y equals 1 and I can plug it into either of these problems. Let's do it on the 2x plus 7y problem, right? 2x plus 7y, well, y is just 1 equals 3. And I get 2x plus 7 equals 3. And then we just start eliminating all that stuff. We're going to go minus 7. And we get 2x equals 3 minus 7 is negative 4. And then we can divide by 2. And we get x equals negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. 
and we've got our y equals and our x equals. And if we wanted to, we can check them, but we don't want to. It's so much work to check them. Um, I know that, that time is running a little bit short here, but I want to do one for you that has a different type of solution just so you can see what that's going to look like and then I will let you guys go okay um, in this problem if I have last example last example of the day if I have 3x minus 9y equals 9 and I have 4x minus 12y equals 36. So again, I'm looking kind of like I was before. I don't have anything that easily goes into each other. I can't multiply this 3 times anything to get 4. I can't multiply 9 times anything to get 12. So I'm going to have to manipulate both problems. So I am just going to multiply this one times 4 and I'm going to multiply this one times 3. Actually I'm going to multiply it times negative 3 so I can get an opposite out of it. Right? When I do it here I get 4 times 3 is 12x. 4 times 9, okay that's going to be minus 36y. 9 times 4 over here is going to be equals 36. And again, I'm going to do the same thing down here, right? I'm going to go negative 3 times 4x, and I'm going to get that negative 12x. Negative 3 times negative 12 is going to be positive 36y. And then 36 times 3, gosh, I don't even know what is there. I, uh, negative 108, right? So when I bring these things together, well, I have 12x minus 12x. That's nothing. And I have minus 36 plus 36. Well, that's also nothing, which means that these two things should equal each other. I should have 36 equal to negative 108. If, these, if something happens and all your variables, everything drops out and you're just left with what you're equal to, technically those things should be equal to each other. If they are not, we just say no solution. You can draw a circle with a line through it like that or you could write out no solution. Can't go any further with that, right? There's nothing to plug in. You're not going to find an X value. You're not going to find a Y value. If you get a problem like that and they are equal, like say both of these here were 36, all your variables dropped out and they were both 36, then your solution would be all real numbers, right? But if they don't equal each other, all our variables dropped out, right? We had 12x minus 12x, that's 0. 36 minus 36, 0. We lost our x's, we lost our y's. And all we're left with are these numbers. If they're equal to each other, your solution is all real numbers. If they are not equal to each other, you have no solution. Does that make some sense? Okay. I just wanted to show you one where it didn't work out. Um, I might do a couple more of these and post them into Google Classroom, like on a separate video, in case you want to see some sample problems. Um, I'm going to stop the, the video 